I will discuss stage three. What is stage three? What is the rationale? Why are we doing what we're doing? And, and what does it actually involve? Initially, initially, the original plan was that the project was going to be for three years. And within the third year, we're going to do a number of training courses on various topics. Uh, a bit of non-revenue water, a bit of asset management planning, uh, distribution management and infrastructure planning. In the process, as the program progresses, we changed our mind. And we realized, and commercial rehabilitation quality, we realized that we must give more emphasis in operational systems, in systems that the utility can see benefits. And we revised the program. So the third year is revised from what was originally on paper, based on what we also learned and our experience, and with the utilities, also the expectations of the utilities, because the last two, three years we had a lot of requests and questions. We had a lot of questions asking us, all right, we're doing what we're doing. What this has to do with non-revenue water? Why are we capturing all the data? How this is related with non-revenue water? Uh, how is it related with our production figures, with our energy efficiency programs? We're going in different D-LEAP directions, asking us to participate in this program and this program. How these are linked together? What, what is the link? What eventually find we're capturing our networks? Why? To make a report? Yes. We have a report. We have a report for the financial department, for the municipality. But ultimately, what are we going to do with the data and why are we really capturing them? Okay. The answer to that question is the third year. Why are you really capturing the data? And in one word, the reason you're capturing your data is something called distribution management. The word distribution management, it is what it says to manage your network, to manage your distribution. So the main reason you're capturing the data is not to provide input to the financial department, and it's not to provide a nice report to the municipality. The main reason you're doing what you're doing is to manage the distribution. And what that means, manage the distribution, it means two things. Record everything about the distribution, and secondly, manage your zones. At the heart of everything is zoning. That is the crux of the matter. It's, everything is about zoning. And because we got an extension, and because this program is going to be running for another three years, starting from now, we have the luxury to do things properly. So next year, to start fully implementing distribution management with the models that we're also going to provide, and in the years to come to also explain you a few planning issues, because all of this here is about planning, and explain you what else you need to do. So the three years program will cover fully your operational needs, the day-to-day -day operations, what you need to do, what you need to record, what you need to have in place, and then we're going to address in a series of short courses what else you need to do? That, that else is called planning. Optimization plan, infrastructure planning, business planning. Where do all these fit? And how do they fit in all the information you're collecting? So unfortunately, it's a long story. But it has to be followed in all the steps because asset management involves all these steps. It puts together all these functions. Uh, it puts together things that now they're not fully related. Um, when we address zoning properly, proper addressing of zoning implies also understanding why the zoning is wrong and how the zoning should be reconfigured. And that's part of what we call optimization. One of the big issues in the region is that the zoning is actually wrong. The zoning is configured wrong with very bad results for the networks. The fact that you're pumping, you're pumping, everybody's pumping everywhere. You go to municipalities and half the cost is electricity because of the bad zoning. 
And that bed zoning has implication on the pumping, has implications on electricity, has implications in non-revenue water and water losses in everything. So we're opening that can of worms right now, discussing about, first of all, zoning. So the idea here is that we started with a silver package and we had the first year. Then we came to the gold packets where we're introducing maintenance. Nothing from what we've done stops. If you saw the presentation we did, nothing from what we presented stops. Nothing is finished. You continue indefinitely. You continue capturing data. You continue recording work orders, job cards. This is an open topic. The more it's a matter, as a lady said, of appetite. I mean, maintenance, once you open your appetite, I can discuss another hundred things that we haven't discussed. Not only linking with financial systems, we can even discuss on the field recording of logs. But it's not of the moment. That's something else to discuss later. And then the platinum stage we're introducing next year involves two series of courses on distribution management, discussing non-revenue monitoring and operations. So we'll have two courses for that, a basic and advanced one, addressing these two issues of distribution management. And in the years to come, in addition to discussing everything has been done till now, we'll address the planning parts of rehabilitation plan, infrastructure planning, and commercial rehabilitation. So this is, in a nutshell, how the program is configured right now. So distribution management. Let's start who should participate. You don't need to be live with a maintenance system, but you need to have a computerized billing system. That I think everybody has, a computerized billing system. You need to have reasonably correct network data reasonably correct network data is a big word, and reasonably zoned network. That's also a big, a big word. So coming back to my main question, has any of you ever run the zone manager? Has anybody seen the system to produce his zoning? Has any of you tried to see if he can see the zoning? That's something to be discussed. Why am I saying that? Some people say I capture 80% of my networks or 90% of my networks. For zoning, this is not good enough. For zoning to be shown up, you have to capture 100% of the networks. Unfortunately, that is the problem. 95% won't cut it. 98% doesn't cut it. It has to be 100%. Why? Because you forget one valve, one valve that is not captured, and all the zoning is wrong. You understand the problem? You, there is a pipe linking two zones that you didn't see it and you didn't record it, and all your network is wrong. So. The issue is serious. If you, the, 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 the final objective of phase one, the final objective is everything to be in, not 98, 100%. You can only be satisfied yourselves. I always say that. You can always satisfy yourselves that what you've done is correct. If you click on the system, you open the zoning, you look at the zones that produce automatically, and then you go in the next room on the wall where you have some old drawing with your zones, and what the two are the same, then it means you've done it. If it's not the same, you're sitting with a problem. Then the problem is either what you have in the wall is correct or what you have in the computer is correct <laughs> and has to be resolved. There is no way out of it. And it's a difficult problem. It means you have to go all the boundary of the zone trying to find why the two, they don't, they're not the same. So what I'm trying to say here is that the ultimate completion of stage one is the zoning. 
And the zoning is the introduction to stage three, the distribution management. Everything relies on zoning. And everything we're saying is related to zoning. To do that, we introduce in phase three a few modules. Basically, the zone manager, which is also available right now. A new module called monitoring and the module on unaccounted for water and on revenue water. But both of these modules rely on zoning. So let's discuss a bit operations. Before we come into other parts of zoning, let's discuss a bit operations. Now, what is the thought behind it? The rationale here is there are a lot of things that you record within the company. What are these things? Basically, the logs. The logs about some asset. So if you have a pump station, you're probably sending somebody there to record how many hours the pump is operating, or what's the flow, or the volume of water going out of the pump station. And probably, somebody might be going there every day recording these numbers. The same with your boreholes, the same with your bulk meters. If you put everything down on paper, you might realize that these, whole, these logs, they're not one or two, they can be hundreds. What is the objective? Computerize it completely. Why? The why is not going to be answered immediately, but it's very, very important to what we're trying to do, understand how the system behaves. And these logs can be extremely useful to making these deductions. So we have to start by capturing these logs, computerizing, and understanding what's the implication. So operation is linked to zoning, to zone management, is linked to bulk meter management, which for a small utility, they might have one or two bulk meters. But for a bigger utility, there might be 30, 40, 50 bulk meters. And bulk meter management can become a big operation. Production management, and finally, performance analysis and efficiency, energy efficiency. Discussing shortly these things, zoning is exactly what I've told you. Zoning is complicated. When I saw zoning, I love to show BVK. What you see in the picture is the zoning of BVK. Just by looking at it from my side, because I've seen a lot of systems, just by looking at it, I can tell you one thing. This is a disaster. This is an absolute disaster. If you superimpose the elevations here, you will see that the whole system from the river here going upwards, what they're doing, they're pumping with hundreds, hundreds. Every one of these symbols is a borehole. With hundreds of boreholes, they're pumping from the river all the way up, all to the north, thousands and thousands of gallons. They separate in different zones that you see with different colors. They have a series of valves between one zone to the next. Now they're pumping straight from the river. All these hundreds, hundreds, hundreds of boreholes. They're pumping from the river with all these nice boreholes straight into the system. They have something like 60, 70 valves, closed zone valves. If one of them opens, it will be havoc what's going to happen. With the strictly has to be closed at all times. And the energy cost is astronomical. I mean, you only have to look at the zoning, superimpose it on elevation, and get a feeling what's going wrong. That's what zoning is so powerful. It helps you understand how the system works. By just looking at it, if you understand a bit of hydraulic logic, everything makes sense. So the objective here is to see your zoning. We want to see your zoning. If you're saying you capture your data, all right, let's see your zoning. So action number one is get the zoning up. Be able to look at the zoning and understand how your zoning operates. And then we want to record all your bulk meters. We want the details 
and create a bulk meter registry. So every bulk meter in the system must be cataloged, positioned, recorded. And if your zoning is correct, the system by itself will tell you what's the function of this bulk meter. So the system will classify all your bulk meters depending on how useful is the bulk meter. No, it can't be five minutes. I just started. It's another hour. <laughs> so the system will immediately tell you if that bulk meter makes sense or it doesn't make sense. How does the system know? Of course it knows. Because if a bulk meter is in the middle of the zone, it's absolutely useless. You measure it for no reason. It has no function. It's very, very common we go into utilities that have 40 bulk meters and only 20 make sense. The rest, they record them for nothing. They're absolutely useless. So first function is to classify the bulk meters and see if they're useful or not. And if they're useful, we want to say, all right, please, import all the readings. We want to see the readings of the bulk meters. We want to know every time you read, every month, every week, every two months. Normally, you have either you have them on telemetry or you have weekly runs. So these bulk meters must come into the system, and we can analyze them and see if you're recording properly or if the readings make sense. Why we do that? Because we want to do this thing here. We want to come to this point, which is called supply flow analysis. Simple terms. We want to know in each one of DMAs what goes in. We want to understand how much water goes in on a daily, weekly basis, monthly basis in each of your zones. Why we want to do that? because that's the basis of everything. Imagine how useful is the information if for every DMA you understand what goes into that DMA. That's the basis of understanding non-revenue. So operations prepares the ground for non-revenue water. And supply analysis per DMA is absolutely critical. But we're not going to do only that. We're going to do production analysis. We want to take a step further. As I said earlier, for every asset, you have to declare what you're recording. You have to go back to your crews and say, you, come in, tell me every month who goes out and what he writes down. In which pump, in which pump station, in which reservoir. I want to know every log you're keeping. And that is going to be computerized. And that will help us, first of all, be able to see on a glance immediately all the readings, graphs like this. Secondly, be able to generate monthly figures or weekly figures for the whole period. Thirdly, start doing more intelligent stuff. Because if you're recording the pumps, and if you have captured the details of the pumps, we can start saying, fine, What's the duty flow of the pump? What is the volume you pumped? What is the motor power that this pump has? How many hours this pump is working? What is the energy that the pump consumed? And what does this mean? That means I can come back and tell you for the whole scheme or your whole municipality or your whole area, gentlemen, this is the energy you consume, this is the volume you consume. And that's from your logs, accurate data. It's not thumbs up or reported or estimated. So understanding your consumption figures and your energy requirements is extremely important. And that will bring us to the next level to understand every pump station, what energy requirements it has, the total energy requirements, and the total production figures for every scheme you have in the municipality. And that should be able to produce, you as managers, you should be able to receive on a weekly, monthly period, any stage you want. That's very, very important figures that you should be already getting. 
You should be able to know, last month we pumped so much water and the energy was so much we consumed. This is critical information for you as managers to have. Because this is money now we're talking. It's straight money. And, of course, we can take it a step further and easily calculate how much it's costing you to produce each cubic meter. What is your cost of sales? That then it's easy to produce from your real figures. And we can take it a final step, if we have all the numbers in. The system, it's a new thing we develop. The system will automatically tell you how your pumps are doing. Now, I will tell you for every single pump you have in, if it's working properly or not. Because if I have the duty flow, and I have your numbers, what are you pumping at what head? I can tell you if the pump operates efficiently, if it's inefficient, and how much it's costing you because of the inefficiency of your pumps. So at any stage, you will know how much money you're losing because of the inefficiency of your pumping and what you need to do to improve it for each one of your components being pump stations or boreholes. That's operations. It's a very, very basic module, very important, very down to real data, to nitty gritty, and extremely useful. And that will enable us to do something else. Will enable us discussing about non-revenue water. The discussion about non-revenue water is not to tell you the leak is there. This is not the objective here. The objective is for you to understand the non-revenue distribution, to understand which are the priorities, which zones are problematic, and where you should pay more attention. Where should you focus? In which zone you should go first? What are the zones that need urgent attention? Why your, loss? your losses are not uniform? Some zones will be much more problematic than others, and then you can proceed with other ways trying to locate these losses. But here we're discussing about a monitoring system and involves apparent loss analysis, the bulk meter management we discussed before, and the process that IWA encourages, which is called active leakage. What is active leakage? Active leakage means the cost-effective and efficient leakage management. It's something we're going to discuss next year, but Whoever from you has any form of telemetry or proper recording of bulk metering, and that will come out also of zoning recommendations, how you should do proper metering. <coughs> What's the impact is on the, on the readings. So zoning is the background of it again. We're going to give you formats and templates, and you're gonna, we're going to import your billing data. Now, we are at the stage we're establishing the link to your billing. So we're going to give you a template, which you're going to import, use every three or six months or whenever you bill, and you're going to import your latest billing data consumptions per customer. And you're going to get a reference, your connections. If you haven't done it already, this is on the cards. You will have to get a reference, your connections. We want to see pictures like this. We want to be able to see your zone with your connection points. And if I click on the connection, I'll get your consumption from the billing. That's what we're trying to get to. We might not be able to do it for all your zones in a year. It might take one, two, three. It depends how committed you are. But that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to bring up the zone information and the consumption of the zone. We want to know the total consumption of the zone. Why? Because we can do what they call top-down and bottom-up analysis. We can do a lot of things. First of all, as if you have telemetry, we can analyze what goes into the zone. That's called inflow analysis. We can analyze MNF, whoever knows MNF minimum night flow, what's the variation, what goes in, 
Is it going up the MNF? Is it going down? What is the trend? The system will be doing that. This is an example. This is an example of a zone that the system sounds an alarm because the MNF is going up straight from the telemetry system. These are the daily MNFs from, from this zone. This is called active leakage. This is the heart of active leakage, that you have a system based either on telemetry in the important zones where you can monitor and see how the losses are progressing on a daily basis. And we can do top-down balancing. We know what goes in. We know what is consumed. I can come back to you and tell you, look, these are your zones. These are your indicators. Whoever is involved in IWA, this is the CAL, this is the URL, this is ALI, this is your zone. And you can prioritize. You can say, look, DMA 15 is the most problematic. I have to go into that. So you have your monthly balancing per zone, understanding how your zones operate and how they work. So this is the top-down approach, and you can get graphic results like this, but that doesn't matter really. The important is you understand which zones are more problematic and where you have the problems. So this is what we intend to start. We don't say we're going to complete, but at least to start. to get Because if we do just one of your zones, if we manage to do one of your zones, then we, you can do by yourselves all of them. If you understand the process and the methodology, you can do yourselves all of them. And at the next stage, we can introduce you what else we can do to optimize your zoning. Our expertise as a company, our expertise as Hydrocom, is with optimizing, changing your zoning. We understand zoning. Just by looking at it, we understand. And we tell you, right, this doesn't work the way it is. It has to be rezoned. That's how it has to be rezoned. And that is an optimization plan that results, of course, in some kind of capital cost, but easily promoted to financial institution. Easily. OK. That's my, my presentation. I was within time. Thank you.